In this video, I want to talk a bit more about my top-level assembly in a Fusion 360 project, and specifically how I will pull in reference components to that file, as well as my sub-assemblies that I have created. So here's the project we were working on in the last video. We were in our sub-assembly and we had just fully defined the part so that the parts are locked to each other and have a very precisely defined shape. Now, let's switch over to our main assembly. And let's say in this case that I wanted to create a main assembly that included this part as well as an additional reference component for a gear motor. Now, before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and upload the gear motor just to get that started. To do that, I'll go to Components, Upload, and then I will drag and drop from a file browser my gear motor file and say Upload. And you'll see it's starting to upload. You can close this and let it run in the background. Um, so while we wait for that, I'll go ahead and pull in my sub-assembly. So I'm back to my main folder and I will drag and drop the sub-assembly into my main assembly. So you can see it drops in and by default it's positioned so that the components origin is aligned with the origin for the main as assembly I'm putting it in. Which is fine, um, especially for the first part. I'll just leave it there. Now, a couple of things to notice. Um, one, if you drag and drop, if you drag on this file, it's not locked in place yet. Um, and like I mentioned in the previous video, we want to make sure that you can't, that this part is fully locked. So I'll undo that. I'll select my first sub-assembly, right click and say ground. Oh, it didn't work. Um, this is something I've noticed that if you ground a subassembly, which I'll undo that, you'll notice looks like a little stack of cubes. Um, it doesn't actually lock it in place for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why. Um, the way to get around that is if you hit this drop down, um, you'll see the parts, and you can apply the ground constraint to the first part. Um, now it's locked in place. Um, to me, that's kind of strange behavior from Fusion, but the easiest way is just ground the first part within the subassembly. Next thing you'll notice is this little link symbol here, and that means this subassembly is linked to the other file where we created it. Um, so if you make a change in the other file, you can pull those updates to this file. Um, so if you're working on this and decide you want to change, you should go to the other file, update it there. Um, and then it will pull over to here. That's the best way to keep your files clean, um, keep all instances of the subassembly linked to each other. Um, there is an option to break link. I very rarely would use this because once you've done this, the subassembly is now um, just, it's only defined in side your main assembly and this folder, this file will not be updated to reflect it anymore. And if you make changes over there, you can't pull them into here. Okay, so this is locked in place and our motor has finished uploading. So I'll pull that in now. And same thing as bringing in this sub-assembly, I'll just click and drag to pull it in and it popped up at the origin. Now, for this part, I'm just going to use one of these arrows to scoot it out of the way so I can see where it's at. Um, but that doesn't def really define any position. You'll notice there's no grounding feature, link feature here, and if I click and drag it, it's still free-floating. Um, all that did was move it to where I could see it. So I'll immediately go and use a joint command to place it where I want. Um, so in this case, I'll pick the middle of this top face and what I'm doing is rolling over it, holding the control key so that it will stay on that face and then selecting this point. And then I will select this ring. And like, bef 
In the previous video, I'll just leave everything default, which lines up those two points, no offset, no flip, and set to rigid, so no motion. Okay, so we have this motor here, and try to drag it now, doesn't move, but let's say that I had wanted this to be a pretty tight fit around this. If I use the measure tool, I can see that this diameter is 0.787, and this is much larger. So to update that, I'm going to switch over to my subassembly, and go back to the sketch that defines the tube. So I'll pick the tube, find it here, there's the sketch, and then I will Oh, it looks like I had to find it by the outer ring. So I'm actually going to delete that and put in a new dimension on the inside for 0.8. Um, and then just verify that it's still locked, it's fully defined um, because we have the inner dimension and the thickness. And say, okay. So now this updated, I'll save that. And then I will switch back to the main assembly. Now you'll notice there's a little caution symbol here and here, um, rolling over saying that one component is out of date. So I can click this button on the top toolbar and it will reload that subassembly. You'll see it updated to the size we want. So that's a pretty easy way to just pull updates into your main assembly and know that all your files are exactly the same. So to summarize, um, when creating your main assembly, you generally don't want to create components here. You want to pull in your reference components or your sub-assembly files, place them in um, your first one. You'll want to ground so that it's locked in place. Subsequent ones, you'll want to use joint to make sure that they're locked with respect to the first part. And then if you want to edit a part in your main assembly, you should go to your sub-assembly, modify it there, and then use the update button that comes up at the top bar to pull those updates into your main file.